Hi, this is Elijah with the Oxygen Team. And in this video, I'm excited to show you the new Conditions feature, which is introduced in Oxygen 2.4 Alpha 1. This video is intended to introduce the feature to you and show you how to use it briefly. We will have more in-depth video instruction and documentation available once Oxygen 2.4 is fully released. As always, if you find any issues with this new feature, please report them to us on GitHub. Now, what are conditions? Conditions allow you to choose when an element appears based on some other value in WordPress. So a good example is, say you want to show a specific section to logged in users, but a different section to users that are not logged in. Membership plugins operate on a series of conditions where if the user's level equals some specific membership level, then an element will be shown, but otherwise a prompt to upgrade will be shown or a prompt to purchase will be shown. So with conditions, you can do all of these things. Now the way oxygen conditions work is if the condition set on an element evaluates to true, the element will be shown. If it evaluates to false, the element will be hidden. So let's show a quick example of that. So I have a section here, and I want to show it only if we're viewing a page with the title of sample page. So to set that up, we need to go into the properties pane after selecting the section. And at the top, just to the left of the link icon, we have a new conditions icon. So let's click that and click set conditions. We will add a condition and then from our list of conditions we will choose post title and our operators we will choose equals and for the value we'll type in the value that we want this condition to check for sample page. So if this element is on a page or a post and its title equals sample page it will be shown otherwise it will be hidden. So right now, if we go to the front end, since this is a sample page, we will see the element. Now, if we wanted to hide this on the sample page but have it shown everywhere else, we could tweak our condition by changing it to post title does not equal sample page. So this would evaluate to false when viewing the sample page. So then we click save. Let's jump to the front end and refresh. And you can see that section is now hidden because our condition is checking if the post title does not equal sample page. And if it does not equal, it evaluates to true and then this section is shown. Otherwise, it evaluates to false and it's hidden. Now, to control the way elements with conditions appear in the builder, there is an in editor behavior option here. You can choose Always Show, which is selected by default. Always Hide, which is useful if you want to see what a page looks like if an element's conditions evaluate to false. And Show or Hide based on conditions. This lets you essentially preview the evaluation of the condition in the builder. So if we go in here and we switch this to a condition that evaluates to true, you'll see that the uh, section actually appears in the builder. Now, one thing to note about conditions is that you can have multiple conditions per element, but this condition stack is treated as an and condition. So we have post title equals sample page. If we add another one, like post ID equals 32, then both of these have to evaluate to true in order for the element to be shown. If they don't both evaluate to true, then it's treated as a false evaluation and the element will be hidden. So let's get rid of that extra condition. And the other really cool thing about the conditions feature is literally every element in the builder can have a condition applied. So if we want to display this heading conditionally, we can go up here and set a condition for it. This icon, the this text element, the button, any of these images, they can all have their own individual conditions applied. So that makes this feature really powerful and flexible. Finally, if we look at the conditions we have, you can see there are quite a few, and we do plan to register more, but they don't cover all the bases. So what we've done is we've included a conditions API that allows you to easily create your own conditions for use in the builder. So I'll show you how to register your own condition and use it in Oxygen. 
So let's jump back to the dashboard here and registering conditions in Oxygen can be done with your own custom plugin. But for this example, I'm going to use code snippets. I have already installed and activated code snippets. So let's jump to snippets in the dashboard. And here's a snippet we can work from where I already have an example condition set up. So the first thing that's pretty important is to check if the oxygen VSB register condition function exists. This helps us avoid errors if it doesn't exist and we try to call it. So I like to wrap my condition registration in this if. Now, if we look at the structure of oxygen VSB register condition function, we have a few arguments. The condition name, an options array, the first value in this array is options, which is where you can input the predetermined values that you want to look for. So in this example, it's a true or false condition, so I've just put true and false. You can also allow the user to input their own value by setting custom to true. In this case, I've set it to false. Next is your array of operators, which will be used to evaluate the function. And then your, the name of the function that evaluates the condition for you, and then the category of the condition. And then if we look down here, here's the function that evaluates the condition. And to that, we have passed in the value and operator variables. And these are used within the function to evaluate the condition. Now to illustrate how to set one of these up, I'm going to go ahead and make a condition that checks if a user is logged in or not, which is a very common use case for conditions. So we'll start by calling the oxygen VSB register condition function. Next we need to pass in our argument. So we'll call this is user logged in. Now our options. So we start with an array and then within that array we have the options key which itself is another array which can contain anything, but in this case, we'll use true or false since we're just checking whether a user's logged in or not. Now our next key is custom, and this if this is set to true, the user is able to type in their own value rather than just using true or false. And for this case, we'll leave it as false. Now the next argument is our operators. So that's gonna be an array of operator values. So we'll do equals and does not equal. Now we have the name of our callback function, so we'll call this um, oxygen is user logged in callback. And then we have the category of the condition, and we'll call this uh, user category. Now we have registered our condition, but we need to handle the condition with our callback function. So we'll create the function oxygen is user logged in callback and it needs to have the value and operator variables there and now within this function we will evaluate the condition so first what are we comparing to what do we need to check so in this case we want to see if the user is logged in so we're going to set up a variable called logged in and then we'll use the uh, wordpress function is user logged in and that'll return true if the user is logged in and false if it's not now we're going to compare that to the value which is passed to this function when we register the condition and the user chooses the value in this case it can be true or false and we'll set that to a boolean value of whatever the user passed to the function finally we need to go ahead and evaluate this so the way this works is we set up one condition which checks the operator and in this case we'll check if the operator equals equals and if it does we're going to evaluate the uh, logged in variable against the value variable based on this operator so if value equals logged in then this will evaluate to true, so we just need to say return true. Else, return false. Great, so now we just need to handle the does not equal operator, so we'll just add an else if. 
operator equals does not equal there we go and then if value does not equal logged in return true else return false great so now we're checking the value that the user has chosen against whether the user is logged in or not and then based on the operator we're returning true or false which will determine how the elements hidden so let's go ahead and save this snippet and then let's jump into the builder where we were at before and we'll refresh the page now if we select this element and go into the conditions and look in our list we will have is user logged in under the user category so in this example let's set up two sections uh, this section will be shown if the user's logged in and it'll say welcome and then the user's name so we'll use insert data to insert the current user's display name and then we'll add another section that says please sign up please sign up guest great we'll tell them sign up now all right so if the user's not logged in we want to show them this section if they are logged in we want to show them this top section so let's set up our conditions for the top section we'll hit the condition go to set conditions and we'll say is user logged in equals true we'll have that be shown and then on this one we'll set is user logged in equals false great so now if we jump into the front end we will see the top section which we've chosen to show to logged in users and then if we grab this page and visit it in an incognito window which means we're logged out we will see the other section which says please sign up guest so in this way you can see how easy it is to register a custom condition assuming we do not have a built-in condition that meets your needs and then use that condition in oxygen to show elements to the specific people and in the specific scenarios that you want to show it now again we'll be registering many more conditions as development continues on 2.4 but we have a baseline there for you to experiment and play with and we'll also have some preliminary documentation available on the API so that you know how to register your own conditions and try that out. If you encounter any bugs or issues with the alpha, you can report it on GitHub or feel free to send us an email at support at oxygenbuilder.com. This is Elijah with the Oxygen team and thank you very much for watching.